you're watching Swipe and here's a little taste of what we've got for you in the next 10 minutes. Alex looks at the not so secret life of pets with the tech keeping tabs on what they're up to. Meanwhile, I'll be climbing inside the chamber set to recharge my body. And we've got Vikings, Knights and Samurais in our games review. Welcome to Swipe. We've come to a clinic this week to see a unique kind of treatment which is apparently being used by sports stars, celebrities and biohackers to help rejuvenate their bodies. But before we talk more about boosting human performance, Alex has been looking at the animal kind, or more specifically, the technology that we can use to keep tabs on our pet's health. Take a look at this. Welcome to Life as a dog. Things appear very different on this end of the lead. So as pet owners, it can be hard to get a real sense of the health and the well-being of our animals. But given the expansion in wearable health tech for us, it was only a matter of time before the pet sector caught up. So Dex is wearing one of the Helix devices and that measures their movement and motion. So it's collecting data from all three axes, X, Y and Z, and we're using that to kind of identify things like walking, running, jumping. A new British startup has brought together vets and engineers from companies like Dyson to create what they call the first smart pet health monitor. And given the global pet market is estimated to be worth well over a hundred billion dollars, you can see the incentive to pair our love of animals with our love of tech. This device is worn by the pets, and when the pet comes into proximity with this beacon, we get a pairing. So this sends out a unique ID that says you've paired with a fat food bowl, and we measure how long it's been there and the frequency or frequency and duration. And from that, we can build up a pattern. So that data gets sent up to the cloud, and then we can manipulate data, analyze it, and then feed that information back onto our smartphone. And dinner time proved the perfect chance for us to put the prototype to the test. A simple glance at the smartphone app lets us know that Dexter has left the basket and has his nose in a bowl. So at the moment, a lot of what this technology can tell you is the activity your pet's up to, their movement around the house. But as things evolve and develop, it'll be able to tell you more about their health and well-being. Because what a dog like Ziggy can't do is tell you when he might need to go and see the uh, BET. I've got away with it. So as this tech starts to influence the way we care for our animals, what do vets make of it? There is nothing as good as having the personal relationship with your pet, and that includes the relationship with the vet. So it's that sort of triangle of information of pet owner, the technology where it's appropriate, and the veterinary relationship. But we must never use these devices as a substitute for understanding our animals. As devices become smaller and smarter, I expect we'll be seeing much more from the pet sector in future. So, the secret life of pets might not be such a secret from now on. Alex Morgan, Sky News. Stay with us in a couple of minutes. I'll be climbing inside a chamber to bathe my body in oxygen from the inside out. Oh, thank you. That's coming right up after a roundup of this week's tech news. Google has overtaken Apple as the world's most valuable brand. Global 500 rankings show the search engine in the top spot, despite Apple's iPhone sales returning to growth at the end of last year. Apparently, the study looks at the future of a company rather than its past. This bot might soon be picking your shopping. Ocado, the online grocery retailer, has been working with some European universities on a robotic arm that can grasp products in its warehouses without damaging them. We heard about the death of 91-year-old Masaya Nakamura this week, also known as the father of Pac-Man. He founded Namco, which released the game. Guinness World Records named it the world's most successful coin-operated arcade game. And in Italy, virtual reality is letting visitors look around the golden palace that belonged to Roman Emperor Nero. Apparently, Nero would have loved the VR experience. He was said to be a tech enthusiast, although a brutal leader. Stick around for our games review. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, you'll want to hear about Neo. But before that... Now this is a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, apparently used by sports star celebrities and biohackers for a number of reasons, of which we're going to find out more right now, because Tim is here. Tim, you own this. And it's time I had a go today. So what do I need to know? 
you need to get in and you need to enjoy yourself for an hour just by relaxing, meditating, let the oxygen do its thing. Well, I won't be able to stay in for a whole hour, but we can do a few minutes. Now, what, what are these bits in here for me? So this is your oxygen mask. So we can give you oxygen, 97% roughly. So, so there isn't oxygen in the tank. Mm -hmm. I've got to get it through here. That's right, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can breathe without it, but this is where we give you the 97% oxygen. Well, I'm not going to meditate because I've got lots of questions for you, but let's get going. I'm ready. Okay. Tim's colleague, hyperbaric medicine expert, Dr. Robert Pender, sets the machine while I try to relax. Well, until I start to feel the effects of the air pressure. Ah, oh, my ears are popping. Luckily, Dr. Pender can talk to me by speakerphone. That's okay, just finish your nose low. I won't lie, it did feel a little scary at first. Tim, has anyone ever got trapped in here? But anyway, about the therapy. What's happening inside my body right now? Your body is being flooded with oxygen right now, and it's literally getting into all of your cells. It gives you about 15 times more oxygen than your body would usually be able to absorb, so it helps your body flourish. Why isn't it available on the NHS for anybody? Partly because the medical uh, profession is more geared up to pharmaceuticals um, and you can't patent oxygen. Also, it's a, it's a growing area of medicine right now. Um, we have had referrals from the NHS now and um, the word is spreading. I mean, a lot of people have been using it for many, many years but not necessarily talked about it recently till now. There's got to be a downside. What about oxygen poisoning? Because administering oxygen under pressure means that the oxygen that dissolves in the blood um, at a greater level than you could do at normal atmospheric pressure, um, there's no, no way of overdosing on oxygen. Uh, that was a really weird experience. I do feel a bit lightheaded and, and a bit drowsy. Is that normal? I did this for a little while, yeah. For 20 minutes or so, you feel drowsy, and then you'll, you'll become sharper later on and have lots of energy. Sharper later on? Yeah. OK, well, I'll let you know. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Now, while I adjust to plain old regular air again, I'm going to hand you over to Luke with our games review and mind out, because there's a fair bit of fighting this week. For Honor is an action hack and slash game from Ubisoft in which you choose between one of three factions representing knight, samurai or viking. The aim of the game is really focused on its combat, so you'll be running around a map, taking out lots of lower level kind of foes. But eventually when it really gets interesting is when you bump into another player controlled or AI controlled character who's a bit stronger and that's when the tactical combat kicks in. Hack and Slash usually implies that it's quite rushed, quite frantic, but this is a very, very weighty and intelligent take on the genre. Definitely one that you should not miss. Halo Wars 2 is a real-time strategy game, a bit like Command and Conquer, but set in the world of Halo. The original Halo Wars came out eight years ago, but the events of this game take place after Halo 5 Guardians. While the campaign is very robust, the main joy here is to be found in the multiplayer, where there are a huge variety of modes that will appeal to old hands at RTS games, but also to newcomers, which is really, really important because this is quite an accessible game. For fans of the Halo franchise, taking control of units that you've seen many, many times before and unleashing key abilities is a real thrill. But as I say, it is still accessible for newcomers, which I think is very important. Neo is an action RPG that has drawn quite a lot of comparisons with the Dark Souls series, and for good reason, because the developer has actually admitted it was a big, big inspiration. My experience was that the combat is slightly more complex than it is in Dark Souls, simply because of both pacing but also in terms of the number of stances and abilities that you have to juggle. But one of the main draws of the Dark Souls series is this big interconnected world that you're traversing and it, it really creates a sense of atmosphere. Uh, in Neo, you have individual levels, um, which some of them do bear the shortcuts and all the hallmarks that you see in Souls, but it's not as commonplace. That said, the upside of this means that once you've completed a level, you can go back and play it again as a twilight mission, which is much, much harder and something I would not recommend if you have high blood pressure. But despite that, if you are looking for something to scratch that soul's itch, this is definitely the best tribute out there. 
Well, that's it for this week. But don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Sky News Swipe and you can see what we get up to throughout the week. I'll be back next time. Hope you can join us then. Bye-bye.